Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes Ignacio Nicolas Beber, LU5JIB, so that's Argentina. Uh, it says, Hi Dave, thanks for all your videos. I have a question for you that I cannot find an answer in all your previous videos. On November 6th, some friends and me are going to an Argentina National Park, which is LUFF007, as activators. We are planning to make 24 continuous hours of transmission using at least 10, 20, 40, and 80 meters on sideband FT8 and RIDI. Sometime I have noticed that I hear others He's talking about this group. He's on one band, they're on another, and yet he can still hear them. Okay, and the example is he's listening on 80 and hearing his colleague who's transmitting on 40. And you ask, how can that be? Well, as it turns out, it can be that way quite easily. Okay, the problem is that unless you have a radio with roofing filters in it, so we're talking a medium or high-end radio with roofing filters in it, they drop a filter across the band, a very sharp filter that only lets that band through. Now what's happening is you're getting RFI in a couple different ways. One, the other radio is just so loud that it is overwhelming the front end of your transceiver. One way you can combat that is by inserting the attenuator. There's a little switch on the front of the radio for attenuators and stuff. That will help, but it'll also hurt your receive capability. Another thing you can do is spread out more. If one guy has a dipole running this way, have the other dipole running this way, and the third guy on the vertical, okay? That, that's called cross-polarization will help reduce it. Now, there is another feature of modern and semi-modern radios. When your oscillator that's in your system, and you, you do have one crystal oscillator, and we use digital techniques to create the different frequencies, okay, from that one oscillator. That oscillator is often a phase-locked loop. And what happens is there's a sine wave oscillator that is slaved to the crystal. And if the oscillator, the reason you do this is to get more power out of it. If you do that, the crystal is at one frequency and the controlled oscillator that's PLL, phase locked loop back to the crystal, advances slightly and so the phase lock loop slows it down and it retracts slightly and the phase lock loop goes up. Well, this can happen as quickly as twice every cycle. Okay, so you're getting just a little bit of jitter that comes out of there. If you look at it on a scope, you won't even see it, but it's there. It's called phase noise. And there need to be filters inside to keep that phase noise from, because it's broadband noise. I mean, we're talking digital circuits here and it's spreading it everywhere. Now, one of the things that they look at in QST when they evaluate a radio is exactly this. They look at the level of that noise. And it's usually 60 or 80 dB below the signal that's going out. But if you're putting 100 watts out, which is plus 20, no, plus 50 dBm, and you go 80 dB below that, you're at minus 30 dBm, which is an S9 plus mini dB signal coming into your radio. And that is what you're hearing, most likely, I think. Now, the solution to this is to put band pass filters in. Like if you're on 80, coming right out of the radio, it goes into an 80 meter band pass filter, which is very nicely grounded to the radio so that it will not accept anything outside of 80 meters, like the phase noise on the 20 meter guy and so on. These filters are readily available. Now, you can get them uh, from DX Engineering or in Argentina, your local store that may have to order them for you because it's only DXers, contesters, and people like that who are operating in a multi-multi event like what you're doing there. And you put those in there and that will enormously reduce the amount of power. This radio here, which is my ICOM 7300, 
is technically an entry-level radio. Now, although it's got many, many, many features and is a wonderful radio, the thing about it is that it has no roofing filters. And so you can have that kind of a problem. So you wouldn't want to use this radio with a bunch of other radios around on field day, for example. Now that radio up there, the one that is on the right, is a Yaesu FTDX3000. It's a medium level radio. It's expensive, okay? Other models have superseded this, but that radio has roofing filters. So you don't get the interference from the other nearby radios that you do that. You don't mention what kind of radio you have, but it's possible if it's a quote lower end radio, and I know how expensive things can be in Argentina and Europe and so on and so forth because of tariffs and things like that, they can be very expensive. But in the place of the roofing filters, if you put those bandpass filters, you can really kind of do what the roofing filters would do without having to trade in your radio, get a more expensive radio, pay a lot of money and all that sort of thing. The newer the radio, the better that it is. And I think you'll probably do fine. Good luck with the problem. I'd kind of like to hear from you how you work that out because this email is close to four years old and it got lost for several years. Tell me how you worked it out, how you made it work. The easiest way to do it is to spread people out, you know, so they're a thousand or two thousand feet from each other. And then you can do all of this together. So there you have it. Until we next meet, 73.